All right, so our last testimony and I just want to give a brief introduction to. Um, you might remember those of you who were at Lakeside when I preached a sermon on prayer in the Elijah series. I, I talked about a man who we've been praying for for many, many years and that God radically transformed him. And I told you, you'd get the opportunity to hear his story. Well, Aaron Sluter's here and you get to hear his story tonight. So... My name is Aaron Sluter. I am 41 years old. And on a night of June 21st, 2021, I went from being a non-believer to a believer. This is my story. From a young age, I remember my mother and father reading the Bible to us daily. I recall, I recall dreading our scripture readings as I didn't like the convic conviction I felt as the verses were read. One such verse, which we've heard many times tonight, was Romans 3 verse 23, which says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I did not like to think that God had authority over me and my actions. I didn't want to be accountable to anyone or anything for my sins and wanted to feel like I was in complete control of my life. Boy, was I wrong. As the years went by, I started to develop a deep animosity toward God and all Christians. When I reached my mid to late 30s, things were definitely reaching a low point in my life. I now had a family of my own that would often be the recipient of my explosive bouts of rage and anger. All stemming from my sinful, broken heart. I would often have debates with my wife over the existence of God and why I felt her beliefs were in error. They were not. However, my wife never once wavered in her faith, which only seemed to fuel my anger even more. The relationship with my mother and father had also deteriorated severely. I dreaded the thought of coming home and the possibility of being exposed to God's word. In fact, when my father would pray around the supper table, I would often want him to call me out by name as if acknowledging I was not saved. But he never did. Um, instead, he kept silent and was letting do God do the work in my heart. One of the most, most vivid examples of my father's love and restraint came a couple years back while visiting for the weekend. I remember being around the kitchen table and hearing my father talk about God as he read from the Bible. I shouted some comment about why I didn't agree with what he was saying, and instead of snapping back at me, he got up from the table and walked outside. I went outside, and when I approached him, I could see tears welling up in his eyes. I said, Dad, I know we don't see eye to eye on God. We just simply have our differences. And my dad immediately walked away sobbing as if knowing I was saying, God, Dad, God is good enough for you, but not for me. Fast forward to October of 2019, when a mysterious virus attacked my throat. During a two to three month span, I completely lost the ability to swallow. Many nights I would lay awake, barely being able to swallow my own saliva. Tests were being run, but I felt like death had come knocking on my door. Funny how quickly thoughts of God, eternity, and hell came flooding back to me in an instant. I never in my life had read the Bible more. I even went as far as requ requesting prayer and support from several people at Lakeside Fellowship where Brooke and our children faithfully attended. I also started attending growth groups weekly where I would sit beside my wife as prayers were lifted many times on my behalf. Many nights I felt God trying to crack my heart, but my pride still would not let him in. Months passed and my throat started to heal. The better I felt, the less I thought about God and my soul. During this period, I started watching YouTube videos where I would often watch Christians and atheists battle back and forth, just going at it. And I would literally cheer on the atheist point of view because that is how much animosity I had in my heart for God. I tried to tell myself during this time that God didn't exist, 
and felt content believing that when we died, we simply ceased to exist. The thought of dying and not having to answer for my sins gave me a temporary sense of peace. I tried to convince myself that I was free while the lost feeling inside me only continued to grow even more. Thankfully, God was patient with me and was busy paving the way for my eventual salvation. This reminds me of the verse in 2 Peter 3, 9, which says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some men perceive slowness, but is long-suffering to all of us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, on December 28, 2020, I received a phone call that changed everything for me. Your father has a brain tumor, my mother said very bluntly. I hung up the phone as an enormous anger welled up inside me. I remember saying, okay, God, if you're there, show your power, heal my dad, and then maybe I will believe in you. Uh, so as time went on, uh, as months passed actually, and my father grew worse, it was clear my request would go unanswered. It was now June 20th of this year, a few short months ago, when I found myself sitting next to my dad who was officially in transition. For the past day, the entire family had taken turns sitting by his bed as hymns <laughs> <sighs> from Alan Jackson's Precious Memories CD played over and over. I can't recommend it more. I could feel God trying to chip away at my hard heart as songs like The Old Rugged Cross and Oh How I Love Jesus played constantly in the background. Sometime during the evening, Dad had a severe coughing spell, which caused him to try and sit up and open his eyes. He seemed to be in distress as he tried to clear his throat, but was wasn't able to. Is this really how dad is going to go? I thought. What kind of God would let one of his own children die like that? Was this going to be the final excuse I needed for writing God off forever? God clearly had other plans. As my dad was still hanging on over 24 hours later, at around 1045 Monday night, and the, the in-home caregiver noticed some changes in my dad's breathing. And the rest of the family was called back to the bedside, where I already sat rubbing dad's arm. He hadn't shown any sign of mo movement at all for over a day now, and the gurgling sounds from his throat filled the room. At approximately 11 p.m., the CD started playing, Are You Washed in the Blood? <laughs> All of a sudden, my mom started singing in her beautiful soprano voice, and my sisters quickly joined in. I stood stunned as out of nowhere, Dad's eyes started to flutter. As the words of the hymn continued to soar through the room, it was like God had taken out the world's largest chisel and was hammering it into my hardened heart and soul. At that point, I still could not bring myself to sing along with my fa family. I knew I wasn't washed in the blood of the lamb, but it's like God would not let me go. As the next song, I'll Fly Away, began to play, my father opened his eyes widely and seemed to be trying to mouth the words. As I looked into my father's eyes, as he was leaving this earth, something amazing happened. I didn't feel see fear like I thought I would. Instead, they were filled with nothing but peace. It was almost like I was getting to see a glimpse of the heavenly father my dad had always told me about through my own father's eyes. It was like my dad was saying to me, see son, I'm resting in Jesus. I remember thinking, why is God allowing me to see this? I knew I didn't deserve Jesus, and I most certainly didn't deserve peace. 
1 Timothy 1.15 says, Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. And let me tell you, I truly was the biggest of all sinners. Yet there was God revealing himself to me through my dad. It was like he was saying, look, your dad is resting in the finished work of my son. It is good enough for him, but what about you? And for the first time in my life, I found myself fully trusting in God and resting in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. It was like God had literally reached into my heart and soul and replaced me from the inside out. I could feel all of the hate, bitterness, animosity vanish in an instant. And it was replaced by love. By the way, I did finally join in on the singing. We did harmonize together as a family for the first time in about 15 years. And as we finished the song, I'll fly away, at least as I remember it, his soul was literally flying away to his Savior. What? Hallelujah. <laughs>